This is an interesting little case. No, it's not another SFF case just yet from Cooler Master, but a nifty little 9.7 liter box just for your graphics card. Is it for everyone? Well, let's take a look and see. Welcome to Machines and More. Today, Cooler Master is releasing another case with the number 200 in it. Not a mini NR200, unfortunately, but an EG200. So the EG in EG200 presumably refers to external graphics, and this is an external graphics or eGPU enclosure. I'll start out and talk about the enclosure itself as well as my experience with it, and then I'll conclude with a brief analysis on whether or not this type of setup would be a good idea for you. So this EG200 is just that, a case specifically for your external graphics card. Now instead of connecting a desktop graphics card via PCIe to a desktop motherboard, this type of enclosure relies on its own PCB, its own power supply, and it's intended to connect to a laptop via a Thunderbolt 3 cable. So this would be a good choice if you have a laptop without a discrete graphics card or a mini desktop like a Mac mini or an Intel NUC. But Let's talk about the enclosure itself first. This case is finished in matte black and it's fairly compact relative to similar products on the market. It measures in at 376 millimeters long, 127 millimeters wide, excluding the laptop holder, which we'll get to in a second, and 204 millimeters high, which brings it to the specific 9.7 liter volume that Cooler Master specifies. Now compared to similar products on the market, it's considerably smaller. The Razer Core X comes in at about 14 and a half liters. The Akidio Note comes in at 14 liters. And I know at this point, if you're a small form factor enthusiast, your ears are burning because you know, mine would be too. You're like, I could fit a whole computer into nine liters, but I'll get to that discussion later. Of course, the size advantage does come with a slight restriction for card size. The official spec is 330 millimeters long, 51 millimeters thick, and 156 millimeters wide. And due to the cutout at the back, cards can only occupy two physical slots, which rules out any three physical slot cards. For the EG200, much of this size advantage comes from the use of Cooler Master's SFX power supply. And this particular unit used in this enclosure is the V550 SFX from Cooler Master. And it does appear to be the revised unit, which does not employ the fanless mode at loads less than 15%, which means that the fan will be on even when your card is at idle, which is fine because you don't hear it at those levels anyway. You get one PCIe power cable with two six plus two pin ends, um, so two eight pin ends, uh, which since the Cooler Master SFX units use 16 gauge wire is typically fine to use uh, even with higher powered cards instead of having to use two cables. Now I think it would be a huge shame to run a card needing three eight pin ends as an eGPU, but I guess you could get an extra cable and just check the power draw first and leave a small buffer for the PSU. The SFX power supply doesn't just power the card though, and since Thunderbolt 3 supports power delivery, it will also keep your laptop charged, assuming 60 watts is sufficient for that purpose, and you do that through the same cable. Now, one of my favorite features about this enclosure is that it features a nifty hard drive bay where you can either use a three and a half inch HDD or a two and a half inch SSD. It is hot swappable and you can just pop this guy here open and closed. So it's good if you have media on multiple drives and you're switching between them and you don't want any downtime. Now this, the unit also features a USB dock and for the downstream USB ports and the disc bay connection, you'll use a separate micro USB cable, which terminates in a USB-A form factor, and the package also includes a converter for a USB-C end, so it goes from A to C, and these rear ports are specified as USB 3.2 Gen 1. There's just one fan in this enclosure, which is controlled by a case temperature probe found at the back of the cart, and it is a 92 millimeter slim fan, and you could mount one next to it 
and there's an additional fan header on the PCB. The last feature I'll cover is the laptop stand or holder, which is a rather unique feature for eGPU enclosures. And you can just adjust the position of this clip to accommodate your laptop. And when properly configured, your laptop can just slot right next to the enclosure. So it's kind of neat. I'll note that when the GPU is at load though, there is some heat that wants to vent out that side. And since your GPU is taking in air from this side, it's pushing air to either the top or the side. So when you do have your laptop there, it will slightly impede the airflow of the unit and the box will warm up a little bit. That exhaust fan will be on, so the impact on warming your laptop or impeding the laptop's own airflow would be my biggest concern there. Setting up the GPU is relatively easy, and after you have the side panels and top covers removed for access, uh, the rear cover plate comes off and you can just slot your cart in vertically. Connect up your power, hook up the Thunderbolt cable to your laptop, and you're good to go. Just toggle a switch on. Now, if you're a bit less familiar with power supplies, I'll point this out, because out of the box, this PSU was switched off. So just double check that it's on because even if you toggle the power switch on, you're like, oh my goodness, it doesn't work. Nothing will start unless that PSU is ready. So for testing this unit, I employed a mid-2017 so-called non-touch bar MacBook Pro, which is an Intel-based Mac with a Cabby Lake i5-7360U processor. No discrete GPU, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, this is the kind of setup that could benefit most from something like an external GPU. Now, starting with OS X in Mojave, Mac OS supports AMD cards only. Uh, NVIDIA isn't releasing drivers, so as of right now, the most powerful supported cards are the RDNA cards and that now discontinued Radeon 7. In Mac OS, a program where you might see a tangible benefit from an eGPU is encoding video footage in Final Cut Pro, and I ran the popular Bruce X benchmark with a 5600 XT and with just the integrated GPU. Now, typically I wouldn't consider video editing with this particular laptop, but as you can see, the eGPU at least makes the encoding part a lot more usable. Transcoding and rendering in Final Cut is still pretty processor dependent, so the benefit from the eGPU is really limited there, and your processor and memory still will be a huge factor. Now, Windows 10 booted through Bootcamp, eGPUs are a bit of an iffy affair. AMD GPUs are theoretically usable, but in practice, they're a humongous headache. I did manage to get this RTX 3070 running though, and with 3 Mark Port Royal, a ray tracing GPU benchmark, which is a little bit less processor or system memory limited, this really gives us a better idea of what performance losses can be expected with running a high-powered graphics card on a more basic portable like this MacBook Pro. Now this benchmark scene tested out at about 6,500 points, and with this 3070 even in a small case, like the Slinger S620, you can get full performance out of the card, which tests in at about 8,100. So there is a little bit of a loss there. Now, as mentioned, eGPUs in bootcamp are really iffy. The other problem here was that using the eGPU on one of the Thunderbolt ports made the other Thunderbolt port unusable. So I could not use an external drive, even through the EG200 itself, because it needs that second port. And because of the storage space limitations with this dual port machine, which is a 256 internal drive, I had to pass on gaming benchmarks. On a MacBook Pro with a discrete GPU or a model with four Thunderbolt ports, the bootcamp experience is often even more of a headache. Now the EG200 itself does just fine. Uh, for the benchmark, the GPU saw thermals that weren't bad or limiting to its performance. One of the initial questions I had was, you know, what happens when you've got this uh, partial obstruction of the flow through cooler because exhaust comes through here, but there is also ventilation from the power supply fan too, so it's okay. Gaming in Mac OS is a bit iffy in addition to the titles that are even available to run. And with the Metal API, the 5600 XT was able to significantly boost the playability of Civilization 6 in 1440p on high settings. Now for Civ 6, 24 FPS is at the cusp of what I can personally tolerate. Actually, these are still very poor results. The 5600 XT is more than capable of 80 plus FPS on a Windows desktop. So yeah, don't do any serious gaming on a Mac unless you're willing to put up with a processor and memory limiting your eGPU. Which gets us to the conundrum that is the eGPU. And just to be fair, this discussion applies more broadly to eGPUs in general. This type of setup is a niche within a niche. That is to say, the audience that could benefit most from this type of setup is someone that already has a mid-tier laptop that wants to get more productivity or gaming ability out of their system. 
The problem is, laptops with Thunderbolt 3 are already higher to uh, mid to higher tier SKUs, and with higher tier laptops sporting discrete built-in cards, the benefit that you could get out of this would be much less, while with mid-tier systems, you're going to be up against a system memory and processor limit that is going to hamper your GPU's performance like you saw in some of the tests here. In an ideal scenario where the CPU and system memory isn't taxed, you'll see anywhere from a 10% and upwards hit, and that is even before we get to the issue of cost. These types of enclosures are well beyond simple cases, right? They have a, a power supply inside, they've got a controller, they've got PCB, and they're typically at least $300. And this one, which is fully featured, will retail for $450. Then you have to buy a graphics card, which at this point in human history, prospecting for gold might be a better hobby. With the cost of the typical enclosure, you're not far off from just going all out getting Cooler Master's wonderful NR200, a basic mini ITX board, simple CPU with an included cooler like an Intel i5-10400, 16 gigs of RAM and NVMe storage, and at that point you'll mostly be at the same footprint at most a few hundred dollars more than this type of halfway house. These enclosures aren't made to be mobile, so you still need a monitor, and by all accounts, if you're looking for mobility, just get the highest end laptop you can with that budget. If you're a Mac user and the applications that you use are available, the new M1 Max will be a much better choice out of the box. They run Final Cut Pro <laughs> very well and availability is good. So if you want a compact performance oriented system, then I'd invite you to check out the SFF PC and Hackintosh subreddits. A lot of great folks and inspiration there. Now, with that said, however, I do really like the EG200 for what it is. It's compact and it's really thoughtfully designed. I love this drive bay, very user-friendly. Performs as expected with a legit power supply and Cooler Master isn't kidding around with this thing. And I think if your wallet and heart is set on an eGPU already, then absolutely you will be very happy with this. It's a very elegant solution. For most Catalina and Big Sur Intel based Mac OS systems nowadays, I think the 5600 XT or 5700 XT will do just fine. Big Navi isn't supported yet, but that may come. If rumored eGPU support comes for the M1 Max, then this type of enclosure would be really, really interesting as well. For Windows systems, if you can still get one, I think the touring cards such as the 2060 would be the most reasonable. I just think it would be a huge shame to get a higher end 30 series card and see all that performance evaporate. Now, at the end of the day, what excites me most about the EG200 is clear evidence that Cooler Master has the perfect template for a sandwich style SFF case. Perhaps soon that magical product with 200 in its name will land. So that will do it for today. Hope you enjoyed and found the information helpful. If so, please like, subscribe, and check out some of the product links down below. Thanks for watching today.